The major goal of this course is the extension of calculus to multivariable functions. A parametric curve is a continuous function with multiple outputs, that is, a function on an interval that outputs to Rn. It's going to be R2 and R3 for the applications that I will talk about in this course. The output of the curve is coordinates of position in some Euclidean space depending on time. As such, parametric curves used to talk about motion through space Therefore, parametric curves are models for projectiles, for satellites and other orbital mechanics, for elementary particles and atomic models, and any other type of movement. The conventional symbol for a curve is gamma, and the conventional input is t for time. The continuity is pretty important here. Without continuity, the idea of motion isn't really consistent. I don't want to be modeling objects that spontaneously teleport around. Let me go through some examples, but start with talking about how a parametric curve is drawn. A parametric curve is illustrated just with its image, the output points. There is no t-axis. The time is implicit along the path. First example is the circle. The curve gamma of t equals cos t sine t traces out a circle. At time zero, cosine of zero is one and sine of zero is zero. So the output is the coordinate 1, 0. Then the movement is counterclockwise. As t increases, cosine decreases and sine increases. So the x-coordinate decreases and the y-coordinate increases, moving towards the top of the circle. Then with the oscillation of sine and cosine, the x and y-coordinates vary between negative 1 and 1 as the loop goes around. At t equals 2 pi, the curve returns to the start. If the domain of the curve is just t in the interval 0 to 2 pi, then it would stop here. However, if the domain were con to continue, the circle would just trace over itself again and again. A parametric curve can do this. It can self-intersect and even entirely trace over itself. Since it is movement in terms of time, the movement can repeat in the same places and the same shapes. This is a very good first example, not just because the circle is familiar, this is a template for many kinds of parametric curves. If you see something that is an adjustment to cosine in the x-coordinate and to sine in the y-coordinate, you should expect some alteration to the circle in some way. The next, next example is the curve gamma of t is 1 over t, t on the domain t in the interval 1 fifth to 5. Usually t equals 0 is the start, but that doesn't need to be the case. I can let t equals 1 fifth be the start here. Movement can go in any direction, of course. This looks a bit like the graph of a function, but the movement is towards the negative x direction. I said there would be alterations on the circle. Here is one. The difference here is the 2t in the x-coordinate. This makes the x-coordinate oscillate twice as fast as the y-coordinate. This still makes a loop but the extra speed of oscillation in the x-coordinate makes the shape zoom back and forth between negative 1 and x more often, leading to this particular shape on the screen. As with the circle, the shape will repeat every 2 pi units of time. A special case of alterations to the circle are counterclockwise spirals. They have this form, where the same monotonic continuous function f of t is apply, multiplied by both terms. This f of t affects the radius. If f of t is increasing, the radius will increase and the shape will spiral outwards. If f of t is decreasing, the shape will spiral inwards. Here is a logarithmic spiral where the radius is increasing exponentially. This is a very common naturally occurring spiral showing up in many phenomena from nautilus shells to spiral galaxies. The parameters two and four can of course be altered to change the rate at which this spiral increases. This is the Archimedean spiral, where the radius increases linearly. When t equals zero, this starts at the origin. Since the increase is linear, the arms of this spiral are equally spaced. The distance between any two consecutive arms is fixed. Finally, I can have other spirals and other curves in three dimensions as well. Here, I've taken the Archimedean spiral in x and y, but also added the z-coordinate, which grows linearly. The result is an Archimedean spiral, which is gaining height at a constant rate, 
producing this expanding 3D spiral shape. 